One of the main advantages of stored procedures is how they allow us to have more control over the security of the database. We'll be working with a hypothetical user in this exercise called John. There's a script in your exercise files for creating the John user. Consider the scenario where we want to give John read-only access to a particular table, and maybe not even the entire table, maybe just one or two columns in the table. You could manually go in and set all these permissions on the table uh, for each individual column. You could either grant or deny permission, but it might be a lot of work to do that for a whole bunch of users. So we can hopefully lower our administrative effort by using a different technique to accomplish the same thing. I have on the screen a basic store procedure. Again, you can find this in your exercise files. The store procedure is called security test. It will perform a select statement. I'm going to select two columns from the author's table. Fairly simple. When we execute this, we get the results we expected. Nothing too exciting just yet. We get first name and last name from every row in the table. Now let's talk about John. So let's go ahead and give John permission to run this store procedure. We'll right-click on it, and at the bottom we have Properties. Over here we can go to Permissions. We'll be setting permissions for John, and we're going to allow him to execute, and that's it. I don't want him doing anything other than executing this store procedure. So I will log out, and then log back in as John. And he can get into the My Database. He can see one of the store procedures. Now remember our database has three store procedures. John can only see one of them, the one we gave him permission to. And he should be able to execute that store procedure. And yes, in fact, he can. And he gets the exact same results as any other user. John cannot see the table. He doesn't see the underlying table. So he has no way of knowing there are other columns in this table. Some of those other columns in the table are, in fact, storing things like address and phone number, which could be confidential information. Using this technique, we've completely masked not only the contents of those columns from John, we've also masked even the fact that those columns exist. So, when we're in a situation like this where we want a stored procedure to allow access to a table where the user does not have permission to that underlying table, in order for it to work, the store procedure and the table need to have the same owner. And in fact, our store procedure is owned by DBO, and the table is also owned by DBO. If either of them was owned by someone else, this would not work. So let's go ahead and demo that. I'm going to log out as John. Log back in as someone who has the necessary permissions to change this stuff. So our author's table is currently owned by DBO. Let's go ahead and change that. So we're going to use a store procedure designed for changing ownership. It's called SP change object owner. And the thing we want to change the owner of is DBO.authors. And we'll want to change the owner to Martin. That looks like it worked. Quick refresh right here. Yes. We'll also need to make one change to the store procedure. The store procedure is looking for dbo.authors, which no longer exists. So we'll change that to martin.authors. Then now I'd like to test and make sure the store procedure still works for Martin, because Martin should still have enough permission for this to run. So execute dbo.security test. And that still runs for Martin. I'm anticipating this will not work properly for John. Let's go ahead and test that. Going to log out as Martin, log back in as John. John can still see the store procedure. But when he tries to execute the store procedure, it gives the error. Select permission was denied on the object authors. So now, because the store procedure and the authors table have different owners, the permissions are not passed back and forth the same way, and John is no longer able to query that from the store procedure, even though he has permission to the store procedure. In this case, he would also need permission to the underlying table. So the hypothetical we were working through when we first started this, of we want to allow access to John, will only work if both items are owned by the same owner. So now let's do a little housekeeping to clean up some of the changes we made here. First of all, I'm going to log out as John, because the remainder of the work I want to do as a different user. I'll log back in as myself. 
and we should see the authors table is still owned by Martin. I would prefer to put it back to being owned by DBO, and if you want your environment to match mine, go ahead and execute the code that's on the screen, and make sure it's martin.authors. And when we refresh, yes, we should see that is now owned again by DBO, and it will remain that way for the remainder of our course.